might come to the house of prayer, the house of worship. Focus our minds on what thus says the Lord. Yes, sir. We want to talk to you a while tonight about they were washing their nets. They were washing their nets. Those that fish understand what that's all about. But I'm not talking about fishing out in the lake of Fort Smith or some other lake. I'm talking about going out in the hedges and the highways, yes. yeah. bringing men to Jesus. I don't know what you think about today's world. I don't know what you have seen in the last few weeks with all of the turmoil and the storms that's been going on. Mm -hmm. Even with that, we still got some situations and things that we need in our life for the Lord to work on. Amen. Uh -huh. And the only way we can get those things solved is by going to God and through Jesus Christ and asking him mm -hmm. to fix it. Yes, sir. I thought uh, Brother Gibson was going to sing my favorite song. He didn't, but that's all right. I'll talk to him about the church. He knew, you know, <laughs> I know. He gave me the signal to come on up, and I just done him like that. <laughs> We're good friends. We go back a long ways. Uh, let's look at this passage, if you will, because I know I'm not going to take up a whole bunch of your time. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear his word, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fisherman was going out of them and was watching their nets. So you see why I got the subject. They were watching their nets. I want you to just look at that passage real quick. Back in that time, it was getting ready for Jesus to go toward the cross. And folks that was around him had seen some of the miracles that he was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a wonderful thing that Jesus has done. He gave sight to the blind, he healed the sick, mm -hmm. and he raised the dead. Yes. Yes. You know, even now, those with broken hearts, uh -huh. he's still mending those broken hearts. Mm -hmm. He's still healing those homes that have uh, destruction in them. I say destruction, and I mean in every sense of the word destruction, because when you got a family messed up, there's nothing there but destruction. The husband at the wife, the wife at the husband, the children at the parents, and y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? You see that in some of our dysfunctional families. Mm -hmm. But God can make things right. That's when you got to start over again. Lay it all down. Call everybody together. And say, listen, we're on the wrong track. We need things to go right in this house. And one of the things that catches my attention here is that they heard the word of God. Yes. I'm not coming here for you to hear me tonight. That's right. And although I appreciate Brother Tag, and he and I are going to have some words. We can be up at 11.45 tonight. <clears throat> but nevertheless, you got to be ready always. That's right. That's right. Be ready. That's right. I guess because I'm an older preacher, you won't just won't pick on me, see if I feel ready. Got any blood circulating, I don't know. But you know, it's a good thing we Christians that study out the Bible, we can, we can take time to share whatever in the Bible with other people. Sometimes people will come and say, well, man wrote the book. Yeah, that's true. Elijah, Moses, John the Baptist was all in there. Jesus was writing. Apostle Paul, Mark, Luke, and John, they're all writing. But these are inspired men. And they began to write. They didn't just write what they wanted to write, but they wrote what God is finding right. We are encouraged to set our affection on 
things above. There's so much, as I said a minute ago, that you could have your mind on tonight. You could be sitting behind your TV set and enjoy your favorite program that comes on on Sunday. But nevertheless, you made a choice to come to this place to study God's Word. Amen. Amen. And, and, and God's going to bless you. Faith, you see, is an action verb. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently right. diligent seek him. So you got to make some effort. Right. You just can't sit there and wait for lightning to come out of the top of the sky and hit you in the head. It could do that, but you'd be dead. Now, I'm serious about that lightning. will keep you dead in the donut. But you see, what I'm talking about, the faith I'm talking about, you got to be moved, not by the sermon that the man is preaching, but you've got to have that burning desire to do what the Lord says for you to do. Right. No matter what anyone else is doing. If Greg don't do his job, Brother Carter don't do his job, don't worry about me. Encourage him to do it. But you just keep on and do the best that you can do with what you got. Amen. Amen. We are called out of darkness through obeying the gospel of Christ. We are to go out into the edge. You know, after I read Jesus saying that, I found out what the edge it was. That's going out there amongst those that are uh, substance abusers. Y'all know what substance abusers are, don't you? Uh, you know, I got to tell y'all what that is. Huh? Y'all look at me funny. Crack. Marijuana smoker. Uh, well, I could go on. But I won't, I won't go on. But you got to go into the hedges. You got to go out there where they are. And I ain't going out there. Didn't Jesus do it? Huh? Right. He said in the sea with the harvest. Yep. Even the harvest washed his feet with her hair. Y'all know what that is, don't you? Yep. All right. See, sometimes we try to pick and choose where we go to take the gospel. Amen. But gospel is for everyone. Whether they're Christian, non Christian, hypocrites, or whoever it is, the Word of God will help us. We go out in the hedges and the highways and we compel men to follow Jesus. Jesus calls to the church take up your cross. Take it up. It's not going to be easy, the road is going to be long. Sometimes you, as brothers in the church and sisters in the church, you have to lose some sleep. You lose some sleep sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you know, sometimes we, we, we come to a similar like this and we say, well, it's so boring. It's so boring. But what are you contributing, I ask tonight, what are you contributing to God's kingdom? What are you doing to make the church grow. If somebody looked at you, could they criticize you? Could they say that, well, he was trying to teach me, but he was so bored and I didn't want to listen to you. Could they say that about you? We are but earthen vessels. That's all we are. Some of us are a little older than others. Some of us are a little younger than others. But it's still your job to teach the truth. It is still your job Share the word. I'm going to get my where you want me in a minute. Then uh, we see so many evil doers right in the church. <coughs> and that gets, that gets us all bum puzzled. Where? But listen to what the psalmist said. He said, fret not yourself with evil doers, for they shall soon be cut off. Don't you worry about those people that you think is a hypocrite. Don't you worry about those people that's not living right. You try to live right. Amen. Amen. And try to help that person to know when to repent. The fisherman had left out of the ship. I look around 9th Street tonight and this morning and I see a lot of our brothers and sisters have left the ship. They don't know that the old storm of life is going to come. Yeah. They don't know 
that the old damn wagon is going to roll up wherever they are and carry them down to the undertaker. That one day they're going to have to stand before all righteous God. What will God say to them? Will he say to them, well done, that good and faithful servant? Or will he say to them, depart from me because you work in all the living. They were watching that, that. You know what that tells me? That tells me they were through for the day. If they're watching the net, they're not going to finish it no more. They're through. And sometimes we, we go to church on Sunday morning, but not Sunday night. Sometimes we go to church on Sunday night, but not on Sunday morning. We're through. We, get, we leave the church. I call it Sunday church. But after we leave the church and before we even get outside, some words come out of our mouth that never should come out of a Christian's mouth. Y'all hear me? Amen. You hear me? I'm not talking about cursing either. Sometimes it's backstabbing. Sometimes it's gossip. Oh, yeah. You got to cast out your net. That's got to be casted out. Lay aside every Lay aside every way of sin that so easily besets you and wrong this race with patience. The opportunity comes for us to glorify God tonight, but somebody chose to stay at home. Hello? Supposing this was the day that the Lord was coming back. You see, it goes, judgment will begin where? Where? House of And if they're not here, then what? They missed him, didn't they? If judgment is going to begin with us, he said, the righteous scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly stay? Man, I got to worry about that. Amen. If I ain't been right, I better, I better get right. The opportunity to stand for us tonight to not only wash out the net, but let down our nets. I got friends, you got friends, and you got those that you deal with every day on a daily basis, and, and sometimes uh, they just, it looks like to me they're not even thinking about God. People don't even want to talk about God anymore. They rather talk about anything but God. Anything but the church. Well, I, 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 will, I, will, go to the, I will go to church, but there's too many devils there. Let me just ask you something since we own that page. How many devils is in the bank while you cash your check? Amen. How many devils is in the grocery store while you buy your groceries? Amen. How many devils are in your house? Oh, no. Amen. Amen. But you see, we talking about devil. Do you know what a devil is? I found out one day. I went down to Texas because I'm from Texas. But I went to to the fair down there and and uh, Six Flags of Texas. I know some of you have heard of that. And it said, "Come in and see the devil." Man, I, I had never seen the devil. I want to see what the devil. I always had that racist and low and deep and home. And I went in. Because they had this casket to it with his back turned, and you know, <laughs> my skin started to crawl in, and I'm trying to ease up to sleep. But I want to see what the devil look like. And I got around to the other side, and Lord behold, I was a mirror inside this casket, and guess who I saw? I told you I found out who the devil was. <laughs> I've been looking for the wrong rest. I found out who the devil was. And while you pointing fingers at somebody else, that other person is coming back to you. Amen. I'm going to cast out the net. You see, the opportunity is presented to each of us every day. Sometimes it's the garbage man. Sometimes it's the mail man. Sometimes it's the cashier in the school. If you don't say no more than say, uh, we have in service at 945, 93 Church Christ, 1930 North 93. Let's see that son. That don't mean you got to preach the whole Bible to them to get them to come to church, do it. And they can't tell you for one thing. Well, I, I'm going to my church. That's the other one they're going to tell you. Right. I'm going to my church. Well, I, I'd like to see if you could come to the Lord's church. See? You, you're broke the ice. The next time you see him, you just Keep on working on it. Mm -hmm. We're not questioning 
people's motives for going where they go, but generally speaking, folk want to go to the church they're going to because of family, because of relatives. This is where my relatives went, and my pastor. Your pastor can bust hell wide open as you can. Amen. Your family can bust hell wide open as you can. Because I said hell. Hell is not a bad word. Hell is a bad place. Amen. Simon, Simon says, Master, we have called all night. Brandon, you know if you've been up all night, you ready to go to bed. All night. And we haven't taken that. You know, I know Brother Leon is a great fisherman. But if he hadn't been out there fishing all night, no, you said, Brother Carter going around and telling him, Lil, let's go back out one more try. He said, no, man, I'm tired. That's what we do the Lord's church. I'm just too tired. I got this to do. I've got that to do. But you let a, you let one of them football games, the basketball games come on and uh, uh, sail, uh, what's that, blue light sail out to Walmart or Sam's or wherever it's at. We make business in words like that. Black Friday day, we go down there to get those sales going. We gonna go get those sales, but, but we don't have enough money to put in the Lord's plate when He come around to the plate. Uh oh, go talk about money. Why you got to? The lights gonna run free. Brother Leon talking about getting the water fountain out there. That water fountain is gonna cost some money, so we gotta put some more money in the plate. Now, Brother Bishop's not getting all the money. Some of that money going to some, somewhere else. For other things, fellowships, gospel meetings. See, even one day, even one day we hope for Brother Greg on south. That's right, Brother Greg. I'm going to speak up for you. I'm going to speak up for you. Man, this young man is in here working with our young people. And a workman deserves his part now. How? And we should what? I know y'all folks gonna get quiet. Don't muddle the ox. He's a young ox. <laughs> Don't muddle it. That's Bible now. That is Bible. Now you might get upset with the way I teach, the way I say things. I get mad at myself sometimes. But uh, our faith should be prompted by what we believe. If we're not going to practice these things that, that we're talking about here tonight, about casting out our nets, then we're in the wrong business. When they had this done, I want you to know something, that they were blessed, Brother Dwayne. This group of people, it's a they. Simon wouldn't buy himself, Brother Green. He wouldn't buy himself. He said they. Cast it out their nets. They're taking in so many fish that it broke the net. See, when you do what God say do, blessings are going to come your way. Yeah. You may be walking down the street pick up a hundred dollar bill. You don't know. God will bless your life. He might not bless you with anybody. He might bless you with a good job. He might bless you with a good wife. He might bless you with a good husband. But he might bless you with a reasonable portion of strength and health. All he's told you he's going to give you what it was. Three scores and ten, and by reasonable chance, give you four scores. Water, food, shelter, and rain. That other stuff is blessings. See, you just had to look at it right. Some of them stocks you got over there in the bank and accumulating all that interest, you're going to die leaving for somebody to fuss over. That's all it's going to do. I've seen it happen too many times. Amen. You can't take it with you because if you could, Walmart would have had a U-Haul trailer behind him. He gave he, uh, Jesus, if you can remember, he said, if I be lifted up, yes. I will draw all men unto me. Yes. We can't lift up Jesus until we live that life. People look for us, not for a sermon, but they look for us for our example. You know, we must become dead to the love and practice of sin. You remember that Jesus was laid in a borrowed tomb. Mm -hmm. You remember that Mary Madeline and Martha went down to the grave early that morning. But Jesus had got up. Yes. And old Paul said, Oh, grave, 
Where is their sting? Oh, death, where is thy victory? Don't you know that Jesus was able to overcome? And all things are possible through him. We can run here and we can run there. But it's no way you can go. You can go to the end of the earth and the Lord is there. You can go to the depths of the sea and the Lord is there. Amen. There's no way you can go that you can get away from the Lord. He's going to always be there. You can't, you can't escape death. No matter what you do. Paul said, I will not have you ignorant, brethren, of those that are asleep. He's talking about dead folks. But then they're going to get up. And then all of us, when the trump of the Lord should sound, is going to be judged for every deed that's done in our body. Mm -hmm. I want to just conclude right here. and I want to look at verse 6. And when they had this done, they enclosed the multitude of fish, and their net broke. They came unto their partners which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both of the ships, so that they began to sing. Bring your friends. Bring your neighbors. Bring whosoever will. The Bible said, whosoever will. Let him come. Jesus, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open to me, I will come and sup with him. The Lord is willing to come into your life tonight. I don't know what's going on with you as a member of the Lord's church. Maybe you've uh, been like I've been all this year. Like Satan, been trying to push me everywhere but lose. Man, I, I tell you, I, I just, whoo. Sometimes I break down and cry. I said, man, look at me out. I lean over this way. Pop me one. I lean over that way. Pop me another way. But you know what? I got to think. Yes. That's the wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ that will take you up on their shoulder. They'll take you on their shoulder. You can talk to them. And they'll talk to you. And and you don't have to worry about it going all over town. They'll talk to you. So look, I've been just where you are. I'm willing to help you overcome this. And that's what we are as Christians. We help with one of another. We are to bear one another's burdens. And yes, yes, it's true. We are to bear our own burdens. But as, as Christians, we are family of God. And it should never be too hard for a family to come together. When there's misunderstanding in the family, what do we do? We try to resolve. Sometimes it's never resolved. Sometimes it's never resolved. Sometimes people have to separate themselves from their families. Sometimes uh, uh, you, you see folk in the church, they done had a fall, you tell them they had a fall in the house. Want to go down, <laughs> walk this way, the other go walk this way. Hey, better stop that. I'm telling you, before it's too late, because that stuff won't go on in hell. That is not go on in hell. You might as well smile, grin, and my grandma said, grin it back. Grin it back. Because you're going to go through these things. And I, I can appreciate Brother Bishop and Brother Ty and uh, Brother Green and all the, the other inspired ministers that's inspired to teach. We had some other teachers here. And I'm, I'm just waiting to hear. I heard a young man told me today Amen. that he hoped to walk. Amen. Let's walk. And you know what? That made me feel good. I said, I want to step back, brother, and watch you go. I don't want to see him fall, but if I see him fall, then I'm going to reach and put my hand in his arm. Not to embarrass him, but to be there as a friend. That's be there as a brother in Christ. That's what we should do. That's right. Be there for brothers in Christ. We're not here to criticize each other. Don't you know that's what hurts? The world looks at us, how we handle each other here. That's, right. that's how you cast your net out. People are going to see your name. They're going to see, see your works in the Lord. You're here tonight, and you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. The one thing that you need to know is that Jesus died on the cross. That's right. And he was buried, and he rose on the third day. You remember while he was hanging there on the cross. So he came up and pierced him in the side, and forthwith came blood and water. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And the soldier said, surely, here's the sin.
Son of God. Surely, he is the Son of God. They tell me that the bill of the temple was rent. And the dad began to stand up. I know it was he had to be the Son of God. Nobody else ever did think. And now he's at the right hand of the Father. Pleading to the world. Come unto me, all ye that ever believe. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. And find rest unto your soul. If you're worried tonight, if you're disgusted tonight, Jesus said, I will wipe away all tears. Isn't that wonderful? Man. Isn't that wonderful? Man. You know that you, you, your family has been going through some things and you've been worried about how, how the end of these things is going to come out? Jesus is going to wipe away all tears. You should hear the gospel. You should believe. You should repent, confess, and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Why we together stand and we encourage you to come. Oh,